Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Those who drink through oral reception, fully filled with the nectarian message of Lord Krishna, the beloved of the devotees, purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment and thus go back to Godhead, to the lotus feet of Him, the Personality of Godhead. Purport The sufferings of human society are due to a polluted aim of life, namely lauding it over the material resources. The more human society engages in the exploitation of undeveloped material resources for sense gratification, the more it will be entrapped by the illusory material energy of the Lord and thus the distress of the world will be intensified instead of diminished. The human necessities of life are fully supplied by the Lord in the shape of food grains, milk, fruit, wood, stone, sugar, silk, jewels, cotton, salt, water, vegetables, etc. in sufficient quantity to feed and care for the human race of the world as well as the living beings on each and every planet within the universe. The supply source is complete and only a little energy by the human being is required to get his necessities into the proper channel. There is no need of machines and tools or huge steel plants for artificially creating comforts of life. Life is never made comfortable by artificial needs but by plain living and high thinking. The highest perfectional thinking for human society is suggested here by Shukadev Goswami, namely sufficiently hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. For men in this age of Kali, when they have lost the perfect vision of life, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the torchlight by which to see the real path. Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhupada has commented on the Kathamritam mentioned in this verse and has indicated Srimad Bhagavatam to be the nectarian message of the personality of Godhead. By sufficient hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam, the polluted aim of life, namely lording it over matter, will subside and the people in general in all parts of the world will be able to live a peaceful life of knowledge and bliss. For a pure devotee of the Lord, any topics in relation with his name, fame, quality, entourage, etc. are all pleasing. And because such topics have been approved by great devotees like Narada, Hanuman, Nanda Maharaj and other inhabitants of Vrindavan, certainly such messages are transcendental and pleasing to the heart and soul. And by the constant hearing of the messages of the Bhagavad Gita and later of the Srimad Bhagavatam, one is assured herein by Srila Shukadev Goswami that he will reach the personality of Godhead and render him transcendental loving service in the spiritual planet of the name Goloka Vrindavan, which resembles a huge lotus flower. Thus, by the process of bhakti yoga directly accepted as suggested in this verse, by sufficient hearing of the transcendental message of the Lord, the material contamination is directly eliminated without one's attempting to contemplate the impersonal virat conception of the Lord. And by practicing bhakti yoga, if the performer is not purified from the material contamination, he must be a pseudo-devotee for such an imposter. There is no remedy for being freed from material entanglement. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the second canto, second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Lord in the Heart. This verse speaks of the benefit of hearing about Lord Krishna. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada discusses the polluted aim of life and he particularly discusses that in relation to modern industrialized society in which the aim of life is to increase industrial production and to in this way enjoy a comfortable life with increased sense gratification. This is interesting considering the present circumstances that I'm sitting here speaking to three people whereas undoubtedly in Mangalore there are many more persons who might be interested to attend talks on Srimad Bhagavatam. At least on Sunday evening we see what 60-70 people come. So presumably they more than three might be interested to attend this class. But they're not. Why? 
Well, if we ask us, I have to go to school, have to go to the factory, have to go to the office. Everyone is caught up in the modern way of life. And they don't have time for the real aim of life, which can be fulfilled primarily by hearing about Krishna. So Prabhupada, he wanted to change the whole course of human society by going back to a more simple way of life in which, as Prabhupada notes here, with just a little energy applied on the part of the human being, the necessities of life can be fulfilled. The, re the necessities for maintaining the body are, as summed up in, I, I think it was Indira Gandhi's, one of her election slogans, Roti Kapra Makan, food, clothing and shelter. So these are the basic necessities. But in modern life, we have necessities of motor cars, to go to one's place of work because people live a long way from their place of work whereas naturally people where they live and where they work is the same that's normal that's the normal condition their, their activity their contribution to human society what it, what it may be everyone cooperates together the farmer his fields are adjacent to his residence the barber, washerman, blacksmith, they all live in the same village. They don't have to go a long distance to do what they do. Blacksmith will work at home. And barber and washerman, will, they'll go out, but only in the village, not beyond that. And the shopkeeper, again, the shop and the home will be the same same building, owned by him, not rented. And all this plethora of offices not required. Offices are only required in, for administering complex affairs. But life is not needed to be so complex. Complex businesses which import raw materials from various countries, bring them all together, assemble them in a factory and then export them to all different countries and maybe bring the, even the manpower for assembly that may also be brought from different places so unnecessary unnecessarily complex society in traditional society is the only office would be very much limited that would the kind of office function would be like in the king's court administrator's court like this it would be what we might call office functions. Otherwise, no, no need. Lawyers, no such thing. <laughs> I mean, some brahmanas, they might be, they would be expert in uh, un knowing and administering the law, but lawyers as to plead on someone's case and all this, not required. Anyway, crime should, shouldn't be so much. And uh, so many things, just like registering land and so much, uh, not required to register land. Simply this land belongs to this. Uh, and land doesn't belong to anyone. Land is mother, bhumi. You cannot own your mother. You cannot sell or buy your mother. So there's no question of selling or buying land. And even selling and buying anything, practically not so much. Money is, money is a form of cheating, actually. It's because mostly people, uh, just like Dhobi, Washaman, or Baba, there's no money, they don't receive money. They do, they wash the cloth and they don't get paid for it. They don't get given money. Every time you wash, you wash a dhoti, 10 rupees, and then wash a kurta, 8 rupees, there's no such thing. Just they wash, and then uh, at the harvest time, they're given grains, and they're invited to different functions to eat, and then when there are different functions by the richer people, the Vaishyas and Kshatriyas, they also attend, and they're given 
used but still good quality cloth. So all in, if their children are to be married, then the people they serve, or the richer people, they will help them. Or if some of the people they serve, they're not so rich, then they're lost. It's a, they, they won't give so much. It's just everyone is maintained. It's cooperative instead of competitive. So there's no anxiety about, I have to get a job. Who will maintain me in old age? There's no anxiety. And children are not a burden that you have to educate them and it costs so much money. Because most children, the education will only be for what they need to know, which in most cases won't be a formal education. The, the, the washerman, who's to be a washerman, he doesn't need to have a PhD or even an SSC pass. They're not required. They're unnecessarily educating people so that they can read the tabloid magazines and become more lusty. <laughs> what is the use? And there won't be a washerman in modern society because there's a washing machine which is constructed with great difficulty in a big... The washerman will be in the factory con constructing washing machines if he can get a job because he's been put out of a job by the washing machine. So, uh, absolutely artificial society. Yeah, you don't have to pay for education. There's a that you should be paid for, you should pay for education. This is demoniac. How can you pay? Education means to give knowledge that is received as a gift from Bhagavan, from the, from Guru, from previous Acharyas, from Saraswati Devi. So to sell that is an it's an apara. Actual knowledge means Veda Vidya. So it's not a it's not a uh, transactable commodity. Rather, one receives it as a gift and gives it as a gift. And in this way, knowledge is sacred. Its sanctity is preserved. It's not something to be sold or bought. Where you, you you can go to college, but you have to pay. You have to pay to learn. But no, traditionally. One comes and even one's accommodation and food, there's no question of pain. You come, you learn. And then the Brahmana who is teaching, he's maintained by society. He lives very simply and he's maintained for his contribution of giving knowledge. That's all. It's not so the whole focus of society is not on creating artificial wealth for producing things that are not required. But the whole focus is on cooperation, ultimately for spiritual realization. It's a completely different outlook on society, which has been changed by modern propaganda, that we have to enjoy ourselves and that we have to get ahead by competing with others. Uh, and, and they have they make fun of people who are interested in spiritual realization. So people feel, oh, there's something wrong with me if I'm interested in spiritual realization. Uh, and, th and then what they teach, they teach this Darwin's theory. And then uh, th that contributes to the whole ethos. Then people think oh, there's no need of spiritual realization because there is no such thing as spiritual realization. So in this way, the whole society is polluted. This money, I was saying, is cheating. It's actually cheating because they, the government issues paper and they say this, is, this piece of paper is one rupee. Nowadays, you won't get paper money for rupee. Not even for five rupees. I mean, the smallest note now is ten rupees. There still may be a few five and one or two rupees notes around. And even in, the, in Dakshin, Canada, where there are lakhs of coconuts, one coconut here in Mangalore cost 10 rupees. Whereas previously, not so long ago, the, uh, if a man earned 10 rupees a month, that would be considered good income. <laughs> but now one coconut in coconut country costs 10 rupees. So what's going on? What's going on is cheating. Because the government issues paper money and the, the value of it, they set it. 
so that you make a contract to work in a job, you'll earn 10,000 rupees a month. But as you go on earning it, the value of the 10,000 rupees becomes less and less and less all the time. And any time the government may just change the value of the money so that your savings, that uh, your savings, you may have one lakh in savings, but one lakh one day, the value of it, the next day, maybe only 50,000 rupees. They can do that, and there's nothing the citizens can do. So it's simply cheating. that the, the, the value is arbitrarily set by the government. And in this way, they, they go on cheating people by gradually, gradually cutting the value. So it's the, the whole society is cheating. Actually, in America, maybe two centuries ago, they defined what is a dollar. It was given a definition. A dollar, is, and they said it's a silver coin this size, it has this much silver in it. So that is a dollar. But then they issued paper instead of the dollar, and now that silver coin, which is in the American Constitution defined as a dollar, would probably sell for no less than 30 or 40 dollars or more. So in this way, they've, originally there was the, the paper was tied to what they call the gold standard. That, just like in England, they have pounds. So one pound, you're supposed to be able to get for one pound, one note, one pound. Now there's no one pound note. It's too small a denomination. So for one pound, you're supposed to get one pound of gold back, which is one pound is 454 grams, which would nowadays cost several thousand pounds, probably. I don't know exactly. So in this way they've cheated. And you ca you're not even allowed to own gold in England. It's illegal to own gold. More than one coin, you're not allowed to own it. So you're not allowed to have anything of actual value. Even you, so people try to invest in land, but then that's also the prices can fluctuate up and down. There's no, you, there's no steadiness, there's no security. You, you live by earning, but what you earn, that can all be turned into nothing, just at the whim of a government. So previously people were, they were the brahmanas, they were gifted land. You take this, you live on it, and you do your duty as a Brahmana. That's all. And then from the land they could produce, they would be gifted cows and land, so from the land they could produce some vegetables, little grain from the cows, and then people would give whatever else they needed. So it's very simple, not very complex, because it was based on the principle that we're all here for the purpose of spiritual advancement. Now that it's gone, and everyone is simply competing, and they're increasing the lust and the greed. It, it, is, a, it is an inseparable principle of the consumer society that they have produced, that to keep it running on, it is necessary to always increase people's lust and greed without which they won't buy things. Why should you buy Pepsi-Cola? Why on earth should anyone buy Pepsi-Cola? I mean, I didn't drink it for over 30 years, but at that time it didn't taste particularly nice to me. I thought it tasted pretty horrible. So why should you, why should you spend money to buy a Pepsi-Cola? You'll see Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they spend billions of dollars each year on advertising because if they don't constantly advertise, no one will buy it. It's a completely useless item. Which, like I say, it doesn't even taste good. It has absolutely no nutritional value. Rather, it's harmful. The ingredients are in a, not very, but somewhat harmful to the constitution. But they're able to... It's just marketed simply for the sake of profit, for making profit. Uh, it, with no actual, it doesn't actually contribute anything whatsoever to human society, except that people get a sense of 
this I, the, the sense of pleasure from drinking Pepsi. I don't, not that much pleasure either. It's not intrinsically a very pleasure-producing item. I mean, it's not like a mango milkshake, which I mean, that's actually tasty and nourishing also. But Pepsi is useless. So, and you will say, well, we're contributing to human society by creating so many jobs. But it's all... What is the value of stuffing people in factories to produce something useless? What kind of job satisfaction do people get from produ working in a factory producing Pepsi Cola? The whole thing is cheating from beginning to end. So, as Prabhupada often points out, as he does in this purport, modern society is working on a polluted aim of life misguided by developing material resources, taking, ma making big mines and going under the, under the ocean to the, to the bank, to the, to the bottom of the ocean, and drilling to get oil. I mean, this is, is it really required for human life? that they have to go out into the ocean, drill oil from the bottom. For what? <laughs> the food, clothing, shelter, it's all available by the grace of God. They make an artificial society and then overpopulation becomes a problem. How are we going to feed all these people? There's plenty of arrangement in nature, but we're, we're busy sticking people in factories, and so who is there to work the land? And the land we're, the land we're producing coffee and tea and chocolate and opium and all kinds of things which are not at all useful for human society, they're actually harmful. But it produces a lot of money. So in this way we're misusing the land. We're worrying about overpopulation. But previously people were happy to have children. Nowadays it's a burden cost so much to educate them and there's no time the, the, the mothers don't have time for their children because they're busy working and earning money and enjoying themselves at parties in the evening so children become a burden the whole society is so wrong from the very basis and then they have and then they have counseling for psychological problems of course people have got psychological problems because the whole society makes you crazy. The whole, the whole basis of society is crazy. And what they, 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 what they consider normal is polluted. It's normal that you should be an aggressive, competitive member of society who's expert at cheating others. And if, if you feel anomy is a word defined by French sociologist whose name I don't remember. Famous, but not famous enough for me to remember. So, anomie means that feeling that I just don't fit in here. I, I, you can't, can't fit into society. You don't feel part of it. So that's considered to be a uh, psychological factor produced by by a sense of social misadjustment. But anyone who feels well-adjusted, as they say, in the psychological term, well-adjusted, then there's some, there is something wrong with them. You're well-adjusted to something which is not for our welfare. Nate vidu swarta gating hi vishnu durasha ye bahirata manina tipisha tantra murudamni badha Hmm? What's the last line? Andhaya Tandhaya Upaniya Manas Tepisha Tantra Murugami Bandha So they don't know that the goal of life is Vishnu. Their actual self-interest is in Vishnu. And they have so many desires but they're all useless desires which can only produce misery. They're tied up in material existence, the blind following the blind. 
So it is the duty of the Krishna Conscious Movement to give knowledge to people in the form of these books and to create an alternative. Prabhupada wanted that we create an alternative mode of life so that people can come and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. That they are not, all those who would even like to hear, they're not coming and hearing because they're off at the office they're off to work. So this is a very bad society in which you have to work so much that you hardly get time for hearing and chanting about Krishna. Let's read the translation again. It's a very beautiful verse. Those who drink through oral reception, fully filled with the nectarian message of Lord Krishna, the beloved of the devotees, purified the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment and thus go back to Godhead to the lotus feet of Him, the personality of Godhead. Any question about this? Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam.